Hi, I'm Rachel Scott with Do Yoga With Me. And in this beginner's class, we are really gonna focus on the fundamentals of standing poses. Uh, for this practice, it can be nice if you have either a block or even just a big book, like a Harry Potter book or something like that. But if you don't have it, don't worry. Um, but we may use it as we go along. So if you've got it, great. All right, see you in the class. So for this practice, we'll start on our backs. So you'll come and lay down with your knees bent and your feet about hip distance apart. Bring one hand onto your belly and one hand onto your ribs. And you can either let your you know, knees point straight up towards the sky, or if it feels nice, you can take your feet just a little bit wider than your hips and even let your knees drop in. That can be kind of nice to just take any effort out of your hips. And then take a couple of deep breaths and let your back body really rest into the floor. So imagine that the floor is coming up to meet you and support your body weight and you can really just let it go. Let the back of your head rest on the floor and then soften your face and soften your jaw. And as your body starts to relax, if there's any little adjustments you want to make, like you know, moving an arm or shifting your weight, go ahead so that you can get really comfortable here. And then start to notice the feeling of your breath. So there's no one right way to breathe and just notice where in your body you feel your breath moving. So maybe you feel it in your belly, maybe you feel it in your ribs. Maybe it's shallow, maybe it's fast. Just noticing. And we'll start to direct our breath just a little bit more intentionally. So begin to breathe a little bit more into your belly so that the chest stays relaxed and quiet. And then sense how that feels. Does that feel natural? Does it feel odd? Where in your belly, if anywhere, can you feel your breath moving? And then let that go and just take a couple of normal natural breaths. And then start to breathe a little bit more into your rib cage, into your chest. And see if you can keep your belly still. Again, notice how that feels. Does that feel natural? Is it easy to do, hard to do? Where do you feel your breath? And then let that go and just breathe naturally. And then we'll start to do a, a more directed breath practice. So just follow along with me. Take a nice deep breath in and a nice big exhale out. And then take a slow belly breath in and then breathe in as well into your ribs. Keep inhaling, breathe into the upper chest. And then exhale, let it all go. So start by inhaling into your belly 
Keep inhaling into your low ribs, side ribs, upper chest, fill all the way up. Pause. And then exhale out, let it go. And we'll just do one more. Inhale into your belly. Inhale into your low ribs, side ribs, upper ribs. And exhale, let it go. And then just let your breath be natural, whatever it likes to do, and sense how you feel. Maybe you feel breath in some different places, or maybe your body feels a little bit more three-dimensional. And then when you're ready, start to slowly open your eyes. And then you can, you know, reach out through your heels, reach up through your arms, and just take a big stretch. Feel your whole body on the floor. And exhale, let it go. And we'll roll over onto one side or whatever feels most comfortable for you to come up onto all fours. And then coming up onto all fours, we'll take our hands about outer shoulder distance apart. So that means you line up the center of your wrist about the outer shoulder and spread your fingers wide so that you have lots of connection down into the earth. Now, if you're on your knees and your knees feel uncomfortable, maybe grab a blanket or a towel or something like that. You can create a little extra padding there. That's so fine. And then place your knees underneath your hips. As you inhale, drop your belly, draw your heart through your arms, send your tailbone back. So you create a nice big um, cow belly here. And then as you exhale, drop your tailbone down, arch your back like a cat towards the sky and round your spine. You can look towards your navel. And then we'll just move between those two shapes. As you inhale, chest moves forward. And then as you exhale, round your spine. And feel free to move at your own pace. If I'm speaking a little too quickly or a little too slow and you wanna move at a different rate, that's totally fine. So we're just trying to feel the length of our spine and feel into the curves of your back. And then one more round. And then after your next exhale, come back to a neutral spine. Press down through your hands and your fingertips. And then send your hips over to the right. And then look over your right shoulder so you create a big C curve through the side of your waist. Inhale, come back to center. So just moving the spine in a different way. Shift your hips to the left. Look over your left shoulder. Inhale, come back to center. We'll do that a couple more times. Look to the right. Swing your hips to the right. Inhale, back to center. Swing your hips to the left. Look to the left, and then let's put it together. And so what we'll do is draw the chest forward, drop the belly like a cow. Then we'll look to the right, send the hips to the right. Then round your back like a cat. And then send your hips to the left, look to the left. And then uh, draw your chest forward again where we started. So you look to the right, swing your hips to the right, round your back to the sky, swing your hips to the left look to the left, and then drop your belly, come back to center. So it's just a big barrel roll. So don't worry too much about this if it feels a little funny. Really, you're just moving through all of the sides of your waist, right? And kind of swinging your spine around, kind of moving into all those nooks and crannies. And then you can try it the other way. So one of my teachers used to call this <laughs> cat in a washing machine. So you can think of it that way. Um, what I like to imagine is that I'm in the, the center of an empty peanut butter jar that's just been kind of like scrubbed out and you're kind of cleaning all the peanut butter off all the surfaces with your body. So that's where my mind goes, peanut butter. <laughs> and so do this a couple more times again, just let it go, just moving in a way that feels nice here. And then we'll come back to center and then press your hands down, draw your belly in a little bit more and then slide your right leg back. And you can take a look down at your toes in this pose, we try to keep the hips square. So that means that my pelvis is pointing down, my thigh is pointing down, my toes are pointing down. So it's all one straight line. So if you look at your toes, notice that your heel is pointing straight up. And then when you lift your leg, keep it that way. So it's kind of tempting to open the hip here. See if you can keep your toes pointed down. Draw your chest forward. And then as you exhale, draw your knee to your nose and round your spine. Inhaling in, reach the heel back. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose, round your spine. Stretch the heel back. Now for a little extra challenge, you could come onto your left fingertip. So we're just playing with our balance here a little bit, or even reach your left arm forward. Exhale, drawing the knee to your nose, round your spine. Inhaling in, reaching out. One more time, exhale, round in. Place that hand down, stretch your left toes back. Let's do the other side. And again, just 
Look down the line of your leg for a sack to make sure that your toes are pointed straight down. Draw your belly in for a little extra support. Lift your leg up. Inhale. Exhale. Draw your knee to your nose. Round your spine. Inhaling in. Stretch the heel back. Exhale. Draw in and round. Little extra challenge. You can stretch the heel back and then perch onto your right fingertips. Try not to collapse down. Keep pressing into your left hand. Maybe even reach the right arm forward. And then draw in. It's a little balance challenge. Inhaling in, reaching out nice and long. And exhale, drawing it in. And then go ahead and place your hand down. Place your knee down. And bring your hips back to your heels. Now, if you have any knee stuff or ankle stuff that makes it hard to do this, you can always keep your hips a little lifted as you walk your hands forward. Okay, so this is an extended child's pose. Now, crawl your hands a little bit forward. Look up so you can, maybe you can see me. And keep your chest lifted. So hips back, chest lifted, then walk your hands forward. Now the arms are gonna to tend to splay out here. So press down into your palms, wrap your outer arms in. So let's try that a couple times because it's a little funny, right? Bend your elbows wide, pull the elbows down to the mat. It's like you're pulling your biceps in and rolling them apart from each other. One more time, bend your elbows wide, draw the elbows down to the mat and then squeeze them in towards each other. And then try to keep that action in your upper arm so your upper arms stay super firm as you come back onto your hands and to your knees. Now, keep your hands where they are, curl your toes under, send your hips back, and then lift your knees. And keep your knees super, super bent here for a moment. Pull the outsides of your hips back and press forward into your hands. Let's try that little action again. Bend the elbows wide, squeeze the elbows underneath you to the floor. Oh my gosh, feel the upper arms work. And then keep that as you stretch the arms to straight. Pull the hips back and then press one heel back and down. Bend one knee, press the other heel back and down. So you're taking a little walk through the legs and stretching the backs of your calves. And then from here, walk your hands back to your feet. Take your feet hip distance apart in parallel. Bend your knees a little bit. Option one, you can just bring your elbows onto your thighs for a little extra support. Option two, you can forward fold over the legs. And with your knees soft, you can really let your spine dangle here. So I'll just let your arms drop, give your shoulders a little shake, relax your face and your jaw. And then go ahead and, and let's roll up through the spine. So as long as it feels okay, keep your upper body heavy, let your head be heavy. And then take your tailbone down and slowly start to roll through your spine. This can be really nice to create mobility through your spine and keep it nice and supple and come all the way up. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. And then standing with your feet hip distance apart. So what does that mean? So if you take your hands to the front of your pelvis, you'll notice that there are these two bony hip, hip points here. It's part of your pelvis. So basically you line up the center of your ankle with about those bony points, right? And then in yoga, rather than turning the feet in or out, we keep the feet straight for a lot of the poses that we do. So kind of line up the center of your ankle with the space right at the base of your, of your second toe. So basically so that your feet look like little 11s. And then press down into the four corners of your feet. So you may wanna rock forward, back, side to side a little bit so the whole foot kind of wakes up. So one of the things that we get out of this yoga practice is that our feet become a little bit more sensitive because we're in our bare feet. All right, so try lifting all your toes up. Notice that that wakes up the bottoms of your feet and then keep that lift through the soles of your feet, but let your toes relax. Lift up through your thighs, let your fingers get nice and heavy. Take a slow breath in, exhale out. And now we're just gonna move a little with the breath. Big morning stretch, take your arms up as you inhale. As you exhale, soften your knees, hinge from your hips and forward fold so your fingers can come to your thighs. If you have long arms and open hamstrings, maybe to the floor, release your head. As you inhale, bring your fingertips to your shins so that you can get long through your spine and, and even find a little back bend. And then as you exhale, forward fold again and round. Pressing through the feet, inhale, rise all the way up. Take your arms to the side. Looks like you're gathering up all the space you need. And then as you exhale, press the hands back down to your side. We'll do that a couple more times. Inhale, take your arms wide and up. Exhale, hinge from your hips. Release your head down. 
Inhale, halfway lift, long spine, chest forward. Exhale, forward fold over your legs. Inhaling in, rise all the way up. Take a big stretch, reach up, stretch up. Exhale, hands press down to your side. So this is the beginning of a sun salutation. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift, inhale, heart open. Exhale, forward fold. All the way up, take your arms wide, take a big stretch, inhale, inhale, inhale. Exhale, hands back down by your sides. Great, all right, so pause for a moment. Let's come back to the front of our mat. And if you do have any blocks or books, this is a good place to stick them. Placing your feet hip distance apart again. Rock forward a little bit, rock backward so you feel the four corners of your feet, by which I mean like um, the four edges of them, big toe mound, pinky toe mound, inner heel and outer heel, all evenly weighted. And then bend your knees. Now the knees here tend to drop in, so take a look. Take your knees directly over the center line of your feet and bring your hips a little further back so you're sitting into your heels. And then even though you stay rooted down into your feet, press your thighs a little bit apart so the knees stay tracking over the center of your foot. Sit down a little deeper, starting to wake up your legs and reach your arms straight forward. Soften your front ribs in a little bit and then kind of plug your shoulders onto your back. And let's do that a couple of times. Draw your fingers forward, plug your shoulders on your back. Let your fingertips come forward, plug the shoulders on the back, keep that, turn the palms open just a tiny bit, and then take the arms up. They don't have to go far, just as high as you can take them, keeping your arms straight. So it's a little bit of work here for the arms. And then sit back down into your heels, send your hips back, this is called chair pose, also called fierce pose, utkatasana. Stretch through your fingers and sit down into your legs. Keep pressing your thighs apart. Take one more breath, exhale out. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. Exhale, hands by your sides. Bend your knees, send your hips back again. Utkatasana, chair pose or fierce pose. Reach your arms forward and up. And as you exhale, forward fold over your legs. As you inhale, halfway lift, heart forward. This time as we exhale, we'll bring our fingertips to the floor or you can bring them to your books or blocks and step your left foot back behind you. Lower your back knee down, coming into a low lunge. So in this pose, remember we keep our hips square. So remember how in cat pose, we kept the back heel straight up. Well, we're doing the same thing in this pose. Hips square forward. This thigh is right in line with my pelvis. Hug your inner thighs in. If your back knee is sensitive, again, feel free to put a towel or something like that underneath it. Draw your low belly in and then keep your low belly lifting up as you start to let your hips come a little bit forward. Reach your arms forward. Plug the shoulders on the back and then take your arms up. And then as you press down into your feet, get taller through the sides of your waist. Create more space inside your body. To help you find more stability here, squeeze your legs together like you're you know, squeezing a block between them. Or a Suzanne Summers thigh master, if you remember that, right? Lift up, take a nice deep breath in. And then as you exhale, press into your feet for stability as you bring your hands down. Lift your back knee up. You might need to walk your hands forward a little bit and then step forward again to the front of your mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, we're gonna step the right leg back this time. So fingertips to the floor or to your block. Lower the back knee down. So your feet are hip distance apart. Give your thighs a little squeeze so you find stability here. And then again, reach your arms forward. Plug those shoulders on the back and then take your arms up. So this is low lunge. Now press into your front heel a little bit more and start to let your hips come forward. <laughs> You'll start to feel a stretch through the front of your back leg. So if you work at a desk or have to sit a lot, stretching those muscles is really nice. Relax your face. Squeeze your butt cheek a little bit. That'll help increase the stretch. Take one more breath. Press into your feet as you exhale, bring your hands down. Lift your back thigh up. Inhale, step forward back to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold, release your head. Now let's just stay here for a minute. So since you have a close up and personal view of your feet right now, you can double check and make sure that they are parallel, right? And then again, you can rock a little bit around your feet to make sure that you're pressing into all four corners of the feet evenly. 
And then with your knees a little bit bent here, root down into your feet, but lift up strongly through your legs and then let your head go. Give your shoulders a shake, give your head a little shake. Maybe open and close your jaw a little bit. Bring your hands to your hips this time. Lift your shoulders and I lift your shoulders straight up towards the sky. Lift your elbows straight up towards the sky and then press through your feet and inhale with a long spine. Come all the way up to stand. Hmm. Now bring your feet together. So this is called mountain pose, but we can also do mountain pose with the toes touching. So bring the big toes together. Now your heels will be just a little bit apart so the feet stay parallel. Squeeze your legs together, bend your knees, and let's come back down into chair pose, right? But this time with the legs squeezing in. So sit down into your heels so that you shift your weight back a little bit more, but this time bring your hands together in front of your heart. Come halfway down, right? So your chest is parallel to the floor. Send the hips back and get long through the sides of your waist. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Sit a little deeper, right? Bend your knees a little bit, maybe straighten them a little bit. Let's do a little pulse here for the legs. Bend your knees a little bit more, strain the legs, bend them, a little straighten. One last time, bend them, stay low, inhale. Now keeping your spine nice and long, look at your knees, keeping your knees even so one isn't gonna pull forward of the other. As you exhale, twist to the right. You can either hover the elbow or take the elbow between your knees, right? If you're flexible here in your rotations, you might even take the elbow to the outside of your right knee. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist to the right. One more time, inhale, lengthen. Twist to the right. Inhale, come back to center, stand all the way up to give your legs a little break. Let's reach up. And exhale, hands by your sides. So revolved chair pose, bend your knees. Sit on down, weight moves back into the heels a little bit more. Come halfway down, no pulses this time. <laughs> we'll just go straight into it. Hands together in front of your chest. Now look at your knees. One knee is gonna wanna slide forward. So keep your eye on them and keep them even. Inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, twist to the right, or sorry, the left, excuse me. You can bring your elbow into the center of your knees. You could hover or you could bring the elbow all the way across to the outside of your left knee. But then look down and double check, are your knees still even? Send your hips back, lengthen your head forward, and then as you exhale, twist. Draw your left shoulder back. You can use the connection of your hands to turn your belly a little bit more. One more breath. Let it go. <sighs> Inhale, come back to center. This time, let's forward fold over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Take your feet hip distance apart again. Hands to the blocks or to the floor. Step your left foot back. Make sure your feet are hip distance so you have enough space between them. You don't want to be on a tightrope here, right? And then point that back heel straight up towards the sky. Climb your front hand, your front hand, <laughs> one hand and another, like you have back hands, onto your thigh and come on up, okay? Now the tendency here is for the hips to open, but for this pose, we want both of the hip points to point forward. So go ahead and sit down, bring your knee over your ankle here. And then again, scissor the thigh. So squeeze the legs together a little bit more. You'll notice here that the pelvis is naturally, you're gonna to wanna to tip. So bring your hands to your hips and notice here that your pelvis tips forward a little bit. This is normal for us, but bend your back knee and see if you can lift it back up. And then try that a couple times. Tip the pelvis forward, bend your back knee, lift the pelvis up. Tip it forward, lift it up. This time, keep it lifted. You can bend your back knee a little bit more. Squeeze your inner thighs together to hold that. And then as you keep lifting through the front of your pelvis, start to stretch your back leg towards straight. It probably won't straighten all the way, but what you'll start to feel is a nice big stretch through the front of your hip. You can either leave your hands right here, totally fine. Feel where your pelvis is in space. Or if you're feeling balanced, you can reach your arms forward, plug your shoulders onto your back and take your arms up. Press down through your feet, lift up through the sides of your waist, find a little bit more space. Reach up one more time, big stretch. And then go ahead and bring your hands first to your hips, hinge forward, fingertips to the floor, lower the back knee down. 
And then I like to have blocks here, but it's okay to just have your hands to the floor. First inhale, let your hips drop forward. As we exhale, we're gonna pull the hips back. So you may find that you need to kind of scoot the front foot forward just a tiny bit. Bring your hands directly underneath your shoulders, flex the front foot, and I'm gonna squeeze again the legs together as I pull my front leg towards straight. This is a hamstring stretch, stretch for the backs of the legs. Now, if you find that your hamstrings feel real tight, go ahead and bend the knee a little bit, that's totally fine. And be careful of sitting all the way back. <laughs> Instead, keep your back hip or keep your hips over your back knee. And then, you know, take a nice big breath and see if you can lengthen your chest forward. And then as you exhale, kind of melt into the stretch. Keep this guy active, keep the front thigh working. It likes to kind of take a little coffee break. <laughs> so make sure this quad is still engaged. And as you press your front heel down, kind of pull that thigh bone back. All right, let's take two more breaths. And then when you're ready, on your next inhale, come on forward, lift your back knee up, walk your blocks forward, and then step forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. And then let's go ahead and take the right foot back from here. So remember, feet are hip distance apart. Now walk your toes back far enough so you get a nice long stance here. Squeeze your legs so you find a little bit more stability. And then go ahead and climb up onto the front thigh. Bring your hands to your pelvis again. Notice the pelvis may want to turn open and instead turn it forward. So both of your hip points are like little flashlights. And now bend your back knee so you have a little more space and notice that you can lift the front of the pelvis up and bring it down. So one of the things that yoga is so great for as a practice is that it helps to open our hips in lots of directions, which is really good for mobility and functionality long-term. So feeling how the pelvis can move here and then sit down, yeah, sit down into your legs, bend your back knee a little bit more and then use that to lift the front of your pelvis up and then keep that and then slowly start to stretch your back leg towards straight towards straight. And rather than letting the belly come forward, keep drawing the low belly in and up. Sit down into your legs. And if you feel stable here, then you can reach the arms forward, plug the shoulders, get the arms up. And then we find this little lovely balance between pressing down into the feet and lifting up through the arms. So just stretch the body out. Let's take one more breath. And then as you exhale, bring your hands to your hips. Hinge forward and then bring the hands to the floor. Lower your back knee down. Squeeze the thighs, send the hips back. And again, you may want to walk that front foot forward just a little bit more. Pull the toes up to your face, Oof. right? And then pull the heel back. So as I press that heel down, at the same time, it's like I'm dragging it along the floor back. So pulling the thigh into the socket. And then breathe. So. As you inhale, find a little more length through your spine. As you exhale, soften. This can be kind of an intense stretch, right? So if you need a little bit more space, or it's a little too intense, just bend your front knee a tiny bit. Or you can even come up a little bit higher if you have a book or a block. Let's take two more breaths. And then on your next inhale, bend your front knee, come forward, you may need to walk your hands or your blocks forward, lift your back thigh up, and then step forward to the front of your mat. Place your hands on your hips, inhale, come all the way up to stand. Now let's take our blocks and place them on the left side of the mat for now, right? Because kind of in the middle, if you have them. Um, and then take your feet wide. So I'm facing the side of my mat now, my right foot's towards the front. Long stance here. So as you extend your arms out, your feet, your ankles want to be underneath your wrists. If you have any hip injuries going on or anything like that, for sure, take a slightly shorter stance. But otherwise, see if you can take your feet quite wide. Turn the whole right thigh, knee, shin, foot, all of it towards the front of your mat. 
and then line up your front heel with the middle of your back arch. On my mat, that's easy to see because I have a big line. <laughs> you can eyeball it. Turn your back heel back just a tiny bit. And then with your front knee a little bent, just to have some space, bring your hands to your pelvis again. So this is a different kind of pose. So instead of trying to square our hips, now we're trying to open our hips. So as you bend your knee, again, you don't have to go completely low yet, but just a little bit. Feel here the sides of your pelvis again, and notice how your pelvis can move. So it can tip forward, back, so you can move in lots of different directions. Notice you can tip it forward and back. So it's kind of like if your pelvis were filled with water, you could spill the water out in different sides. And then also notice that you can turn your pelvis, right? So the pelvis can kind of swivel. So what we want to do for this kind of pose is find the most opening that we can for our body. But every body is different. So your expression of this pose, which will be a warrior two pose, will be a little different than someone else's. So bend your right knee, this time to a square. So this is a strengthening pose. And now here's the trick. Keep the knee over your ankle. So we don't wanna let this thigh swing in. So keep the uh, knee over your ankle, keep your thigh aligned. And what that's gonna mean that you're doing here is pulling the outside of this hip down. So grab onto your own thigh and wrap the outer thigh down. So we're finding an external rotation. This is really nice for the hips to move them in this direction. So pull your right butt cheek underneath you here. And then keeping that, now turn the pelvis towards the side of your mat. It probably won't go that far. And press your back thigh straight. As you press your back thigh straight and engage that leg, it's going to want to pull your front knee in, but don't let that happen. Keep this thigh rolling out and this thigh pressing back, and then open your arms. Just take one breath. Sit down a little bit deeper, yeah, and then come all the way up. So that's warrior two. Turn your toes in, give your hips a little shake from side to side, and then let's try the other side. So turn the left toes out, the left thigh out, so the whole leg moves with you, and then line up heel to arch on this side. Turn your back heel back just a tiny bit, hands to your hips, and then let's just move the pelvis again. So you might find one side is a little bit more mobile than the other. Tip the pelvis forward and down. Turn the pelvis side to side. Then bend your left knee to a square. Again, grab onto your thigh. Roll the left thigh open. Roll the left thigh open. Roll the left thigh open. It's going to feel like you're taking your left bum cheek and wrapping it down. And then keep that. Start to turn your pelvis open towards the long end of your mat and straighten your back leg. So this back leg will tend to pop forward. So see if you can press it back as you wrap the front butt cheek down. And what this does is it helps us to find the maximum opening of our hip here, but in a very strengthening position. And then open your arms, just sit down for one more breath. Oh my goodness. And then come all the way back up and turn your toes forward. Give your hips a little shake. And keeping the toes pointing forward and the legs pointing forward, bring your hands to your hips, get nice and tall through your spine, and then from the pelvis, hinge forward, and you can bring your hands onto your block. So you might like lots of support here, or maybe a hand on each one. Some of you, your fingertips might reach the floor, get long through your spine, and then as you exhale, release the upper body down. If you can easily touch the floor, then bring your hands down and let your head go. Can give your shoulders a little shake, your head a little shake. And rock your weight forward into your toes just a tiny bit so that your heels feel a little bit lighter and then lift the thighs up. Take one more breath. And come on forward halfway up. Bring your hands onto your blocks or onto your hips. And then inhale and rise all the way up to stand. Okay, let's come back into warrior two on the first side again. So turn the right thigh out, turn the knee out, turn the shin out, the foot out. And you don't have to remember any of the names for these poses, by the way. And then line up front heel to back arch, turn your back heel back and find your pelvis. So if I think of my pelvis as that bowl of water, I don't really want any water to spill out. So I'm trying to not let my pelvis tip from side to side or forward and back, but it's okay to let it turn. So press into your back foot, bend your right knee, 
Remember, we're externally rotating this front thigh. So wrap the butt cheek down, 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 and then turn your pelvis open by straightening your back leg. Warrior two, open your arms. Take one more breath. Press into your front heel. You'll feel your legs really fire up. If it feels okay in your neck, look over your front hand. And then come all the way up. Turn your toes forward. Give your hips a little wiggle side to side. And then from the left thigh, turn the whole left leg out. Turn your right heel back slightly. Lift the front of your pelvis up. Again, no tipping out. Press into the back foot. Bend your left knee to a square. Notice if your pelvis started to tip. And for warrior two, lift it up. And then wrap the left butt cheek down. Pull it towards the floor as you straighten your back leg. Woo! So we're opening the hips and strengthening them at the same time. Stretch through your arms. If it feels okay on your neck, you'll look forward over your hands. Take one more breath. And then straighten your front leg. Come on up, turn your toes forward. Give your hips a little shake. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time and add on. So go ahead, turn your right thigh out. Turn your left heel back, bend your knee, come into warrior two. So now we've been here a couple times. So I'm really wrapping this right butt cheek under, straightening my back leg. It's a little like I'm being squished right between two panes of glass. It's kind of the feeling of gathering my body in. Now this time, bring your hands to your hips. We're gonna to move to another pose called side angle pose. So with your hands on your pelvis, tip your pelvis forward like a little teapot and then pull it back up. Tip your pelvis forward. Pull it back up. Tip your pelvis forward. This time the sitting bones, both sitting bones are moving towards my back thigh. Come on forward, so pull the right hip back and underneath you and place your forearm onto your thigh. Rather than kind of collapse down, lift your body weight up. And if it's okay on your shoulder, take your top arm up towards the sky. So this is a version of a pose called Parjva Konasana, side angle pose. So it's real similar to warrior two. Press down through your front heel. All we did was take warrior two and like tip ourselves over a little bit, right? One more breath, press into your feet. Now come back into warrior two. I know this is hard, lift the pelvis up. Oh, feel the thighs and then straighten the front leg. Turn your right thigh forward, give your hips a little shake. These, uh, these opening poses are really great for us, uh, but they're also hard. Turn your back heel back. First warrior two, right? So bend your left knee. Sit on down, wrap the left sitting bone down towards the floor, straighten your back leg, find your little weeble wobble between these two actions of the left glute moving down and in, the right thigh pressing back. Open your arms, take a nice big stretch, and then keep all this lift, but bring your hands to your hips. Tip the pelvis, <laughs> lift it up. Tip the pelvis, that can sometimes be really stretchy for the, for the hips here. Tip the pelvis. Now. Keep tipping, keep tipping, keep tipping, tipping, lengthen through the sides of your waist. Forearm comes down into the middle of your thigh. Press down through your forearm to lift your chest and then take your top arm up. And then maybe just take a look down at your left knee. Make sure your knee is bent. Sometimes it likes to straighten because it's hard. And also make sure your knee is tracking right over the center of your heel. Now your thigh is straight. Everything's pointed straight forward. Take one more breath. Now warrior two, so you're just gonna lift the pelvis back up, open the arms and straighten your front leg. Hands to your hips, turn your toes forward. Give your hips a little shake side to side and let's do our forward fold here one more time. So now the toes are pointed straight to the side of your mat, hands onto your hips, lift your shoulders up and as you hinge forward from your hips, huh, you can bring your hands onto your blocks or the floor. Lengthen as you inhale. Exhale, feel free to bend your knees a little bit here to create a little bit more space for you to hinge at the pelvis. And depending again on the length of your hamstrings, you may bring your hands all the way to the floor. Give your head a little shake. Notice where your shoulders are and lift them away from the sides of your neck. Relax your jaw. Might feel nice to take a nice big sigh here. <sighs> Let it go. And then on your next inhale, come halfway up, bend your knees a little bit, bring your hands to your hips, and then inhale, come all the way up to stand. Walk your feet together. Give your hips a little shake, and then come back to the front of your mat. Inhale, 
arms up, nice big stretch. Bend your knees a little, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. This time I'm going to step back with one foot at a time so that I can then lower my knees down. Come all the way to sit. So we'll come to lay on our backs now. Uh, if you wanna watch what I'm doing first, actually before you come on down, I'll show you. Many of you may be familiar with this stretch already, but because we've done so much work in the outer hips today, we're gonna stretch them now. So when I come down, I'll, I'll cross my right ankle over my left knee, and you might stay right here. Some of you may choose to draw that knee in towards your shoulder and add the hands behind the thigh, to add a little bit more weight. We're stretching the outer hip. So come on down onto your backs if you're not there already. Bend your knees, place your feet flat on the floor, cross your right ankle over your left knee, and then either stay here, letting the thigh kind of roll out, or draw the left knee into your chest. And you can hold on, I like to hold on behind the thigh, but like between the calf and the thigh. Some people like to hold on to the front of the knee. I kind of like the back of the thigh though, because I find it's a little bit more relaxing. Let your chest relax now, let your shoulders relax. If you feel like you need to curl up to your legs, then place either a pillow underneath your head or just let your left foot come to the floor so your upper body can relax. Take a couple deep breaths. One more deep breath in and let it go. And bring your left foot back to the floor, right foot back to the floor, and then let's change sides. Cross the left ankle over your right knee and then draw your right thigh in. You can sneak the hands behind your, uh, like behind the pit of the knee. Now let your elbows relax, let your chest relax. Let your body relax, your, your upper back. You could let your eyes close here if you like. And take one more deep breath and let it go. Bring both feet back to the floor again. And then drop both knees into your chest and let your knees come wide. So kind of towards your armpits. And you can stay here, option one. Or you can flex your feet up towards the sky. And then use your hands, hold on to the outsides of your shins or your ankles so that you can draw the knees down into your armpit, depending on the length of your arms. You might even hold on to the outsides of your feet. And this is called happy baby. And I kind of like to move around here a little bit. I rock from side to side, you know, like a little baby grabbing their feet. This is a nice release for the muscles of the inner thighs the adductors. It's also really nice for your low back. Take a big breath in. Exhale, let it out. And then bring your feet slowly back to the floor. And we'll end with a pose called Shavasana. And uh, you can extend the legs out nice and long. Reach the arms by your side with the palms turned up. But if you find that doesn't feel nice on your back, and you prefer to keep your knees bent, you can let your knees bend and let your knees drop together. So take a position that feels really comfortable and relaxing for your own body. And you stay there. I'm just gonna roll up so that I can mind the time. And if you find that you're a little cool here, then take a moment, go grab a blanket, go grab a sweater, put on your fuzzy socks. Make sure you're comfortable. And then in Shavasana, our goal is to let go completely. It means corpse pose. And it's a way of just dropping anything, to-do lists, agendas, things we gotta you know, take care of. We can just let that all drop here for the next few minutes. 
Now close your eyes if that feels comfortable. Relax your shoulders, your ribs, your back body. Relax your belly. Let your hips be heavy. Relax your thighs, your calves, your feet, your hands, your arms. Let everything be supported by the floor. Even let your tongue relax. Let your eyes sink into the back of your skull. There's nothing to do for the next couple of minutes, but just simply let go. This is one of the most important poses in your practice. If your mind feels real busy, then focus on the sensations of your breath. And slowly start to deepen your breath. You can wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Take a big stretch or a big yawn if that feels good. And then when you're ready, draw your knees into your chest and roll over onto one side. Let your body be heavy as you press yourself all the way up to sit. And then once you've come into a comfortable seated position, either on your shins or cross-legged, bring your hands together in front of your heart and bring your thumbs back to your chest. Spread your fingers wide, draw your shoulders back, and bow your head to your own heart. So this is simply an opportunity to acknowledge yourself. For carving some space out of your busy day to practice, focus on your breath, take care of your body. So give yourself a big thank you. And then at the end of the practice, the teachers will often say namaste, which means the light in me honors the light in you. So, namaste. <laughs>